This is example 3.2 on page 99 of your textbook. Here we are making sure that we can classify elements and compounds into their different categories. And this is kind of setting up the foundation for being able to name compounds and write formulas for them. You have to be able to recognize what type of element or what type of compound you're dealing with. So if you have your textbook handy, you can turn to page 97 and see that pure substances, which is what we're going to be dealing with in this chapter, are combined into two different categories. You can either have elements or compounds. And those two categories can further be broken down into subcategories. Elements can either be atomic or molecular, and compounds can either be molecular or ionic. So what we're gonna do in this problem is given a list of pure substances, by the end of this, we'll be able to classify them as either an atomic element, a molecular element, a molecular compound, or an ionic compound, given parts A through E. So before we do that, let me do a quick review of how you determine whether it's an element, compound, atomic element, molecular element, molecular or ionic compound. So elements only contain one type of atom. So element one atom type. If it's atomic, that basically means that its smallest unit is a single atom. So like the smallest unit of copper is a single copper atom. It's one single atom. So single atoms. Whereas molecular elements, even though they're only one type of atom, they exist as multiple atoms grouped together at once. So there's two types. There's the diatomic elements and there's the polyatomic elements. So molecular elements are more than one atom. Hopefully you can read that. So dia, di, di means two. That means it's a group of two, the same type of elements grouped together. Whereas polyatomic elements are more than two um, atoms grouped together. So if you have your textbook handy again, you can turn to page 98 and look at figure 3.5. That is a um, periodic table showing all of the different types of molecular elements. So there are seven diatomic elements, and I have a little mnemonic to remember these. It's Brinkelhoff. B R I N C L H O N F. Bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine. All of these elements are diatomic elements, meaning in nature they exist as two of the same type of atoms paired together. So bromine, when it exists in nature, is Br2. Iodine, I2. Nitrogen, N2. Chlorine, Cl2. Hydrogen, H2. Oxygen, O2. And fluorine, F2. So if you can remember Brinkelhoff, you can remember all of the diatomic molecular elements. For the polyatomic elements, you have sulfur, um, phosphorus, and selenium. And I believe phosphorus typically exists as P4, sulfur exists as S8, and selenium is one of those two multiples. So, for recap, elements can be sorted into two types, atomic or molecular. If it's an atomic element, its most basic unit is a single atom. If it's a molecular element, its most basic unit 
is more than one atom, either diatomic or polyatomic. So on the other side of our categorization is compounds, and compounds can either exist as molecular or ionic. So the way that you determine if something's a molecular compound or an ionic compound is by looking at what types of elements are present. So for a molecular compound, that is two or more non-metals bound together. So like carbon dioxide, CO2, that's carbon and two oxygens, both of those are non-metals, therefore it's a molecular compound. For ionic compounds, the way that you recognize those are if you have a non-metal and a metal. So two different types, one metal plus a non-metal. So for example, sodium chloride is an example of a ionic compound because sodium is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal. So that's the basics on how to recognize. So let's put that to the test now. So Xenon, if you look at our periodic table, it's a noble gas. It's not one of our diatomic elements. It's not one of our polyatomic elements. Therefore, it is categorized as an atomic element. And I'm going to shorten element so I don't run out of room. So Xenon, it's not um, part of Brinkelhoff, it's not diatomic, it's not polyatomic, so therefore it's default to an atomic element, meaning in nature it's a single xenon atom. B is nickel chloride, and we'll learn more about how to name that this chapter. So hopefully you have a periodic table handy, you can look and see nickel is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal, there's two different types of elements present, so we can rule off that it's an element. And if we look at our compound classifications, it's not two nonmetals, so it's not molecular. It's a nonmetal plus a metal, therefore, it is an ionic compound. And then we have bromine. Bromine, it's a single type of atom, so we know it's a type of element. And if we look over here, it is part of the diatomic group. Bromine is the Br in Brinkelhoff. It's a diatomic element. Therefore, we can classify it as a molecular element. Specifically, it's diatomic, but molecular element is just saying that it has more than one atom grouped together. And then D, NO2, we can tell off the bat there's two different types of atoms, so it's not an element. Now we just have to figure out if it's a molecular or ionic compound. So nitrogen and oxygen, if you look at your periodic table, are both nonmetals. So it's two or more nonmetals, therefore this is a molecular compound. Hopefully this is starting to make sense, starting to piece together, um, because this is going to become very important when we figure out how to name things. And then finally, sodium nitrate, Na, NO3. NO3 we will talk about later in the chapter. This is an example of what's called a polyatomic ion. But we can tell just based on our knowledge right now, we have a metal, sodium. And nitrogen and oxygen are nonmetals. So, when we have a metal and a nonmetal paired together, that means that this is an ionic compound. And there you have it. That's how to classify each one of these as either atomic or molecular elements or molecular or ionic compounds.